Today I want to show everyone a pretty interesting problem which is from the 2005 Uzbekistan Math Olympiad. And this is one of those problems where you find the final digits of a certain number. And what's interesting here is that we're finding the last five digits of a certain number instead of the last one, two, or three digits which is much more customary. Okay, let's see what we've got here. So we're going to find the last five digits of 1 to the 100 plus 2 to the 100 plus 3 to the 100 ending at 999,999 ,999 to the 100th power. And one of our main tools, which is a kind of a standard tool when working on these last digit problems, is Euler's Theorem. And that says if two numbers are relatively prime, in other words, their GCD is 1, then a to the phi of n is congruent to 1 mod n. Let's recall that phi is Euler's totient function, and phi of n is exactly the number of numbers between 1 and n that are relatively prime to n then I'd like to point out an immediate result of this, and that says if we reduce the base of a number modulo n, then we can reduce its exponent modulo phi of n. And that's actually how we will use Euler's theorem here. Okay, so let's get into our solution. I first want to define a new number, which I'm gonna call n, which is almost exactly this number that's given. The only thing is, is I'm gonna add something to the end of it. So this is gonna be one to the hundred plus two to the hundred plus dot 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 plus nine 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 to the hundred and then plus one million to the hundred power. And I'm going to do that because that makes everything break up quite a bit more easily as we work through this. But also, notice that a million to the hundredth power definitely ends in much more than five zeros. So since it ends in much more than five zeros, it will not change the last five digits of our given number. So just to reiterate, this number n and our given number most definitely share the last five digits. So if we want to look at the last five digits, then that means we need to reduce mod 10 to the 5. But it's much easier to reduce mod powers of primes, so we'll factor 10 to the 5 into 2 to the 5 times 5 to the 5, and we'll reduce each of those separately. So the first thing that we'll do is reduce modulo 2 to the 5, but notice that's the same thing as mod 32 because 2 to the 5 is 32. Okay, nice. But now if we reduce our base mod 32, then we have to reduce our exponent mod phi of 32. But you can easily calculate that phi of 32 is 16, so that means we're going to be reducing our exponents mod 16. And there's a standard rule for Euler's totient function applied to a power of a prime, but we'll go over that when we work with the 5 to the 5 case. Okay, nice. But now I'll take my number n and I'll break it up into pieces that are 32 units long. So here we'll have n is congruent to 1 to the 100 plus 2 to the 100 plus ending at 32 to the 100. And then we'll pick back up with 33 to the 100. But 33 is congruent to 1 mod 32, so we might as well make that reduction. So the next step will be 1 to the 100 plus 2 to the 100, like I said, ending at 32 to the 100. And that 32 to the 100 is like playing the role of 64. And then we're going to continue this until we run out of numbers. 1 to the 100 all the way up to 32 to the 100. And the lucky thing here is that 1 million is divisible by 32. So that means when we break it into chunks that are 32 numbers long, it breaks up exactly evenly. And now an important thing to notice is the number of chunks that this breaks into. And the number is 31,250. And then another thing that's 
potentially useful is the factorization of this number. And this number indeed factors into something quite nice, five to the six times two to the one. But that means if we're reducing this mod 32, then we can just write this as five to the six times two to the one times one copy of this sum. But I'm gonna reduce this sum a little bit as we're at it. Notice since we're reducing mod 32, maybe we'll sneak that in here. So mod 32, we don't have to worry about any of the even numbers. And that's because all of the even numbers are attached to exponents which are larger than five. So they're all multiples of two to the five, most definitely. And since they're all multiples of two to the five, they're all multiples of 32, and thus they're all zero mod 32. So that means we only need to consider the odd numbers. So we'll have one to the hundred plus three to the hundred plus all the way up to 15 to the hundred, but then we'll have 17 to the hundred, but notice that working mod 32, 17 is the same thing as negative 15. So this is plus negative 15 to the hundred, and then 19 mod 32 is the same thing as negative 13. And so that descends all the way down until we get to 31, but 31 is negative one. So we can rewrite each of these like chunks of sums into this kind of like nice ascending and descending object. Okay, but now since we have negative numbers to even exponents, well, that'll just cancel the sign out. So that means that all of those just cancel from pluses to minuses. Furthermore, since we're working mod 32, we know the exponents work mod 16 as we discussed before. So 100 mod 16 is four, so we can replace all of these hundreds with four. And then we're left with something that's actually quite reasonable to work with. We can add each of these corresponding copies together and we'll get two times the sum from one to 15. We'll bring that two out and combine it with this two right here, leaving two squared. So just to write that down, we have five to the six and then times two squared. And then after that, we'll have one to the four plus three to the four plus, I'm gonna write all of these out, five to the four, seven to the four, nine to the four, 11 to the four, 13 to the four, and 15 to the four. And this is all occurring mod 32. Great. And now it's just a matter of calculating each of those. And that's maybe really just an arithmetic problem, just multiplying and then uh, reducing mod 32 at every step maybe. And I won't go through those details because it's not super interesting. I'll just write the results down. So what we get is that one to the four, well that clearly reduces to one. Seven to the four and nine to the four also reduce to one mod 32. So we'll write those down and finally, 15 to the four also reduces to one mod 32. And all of the remaining numbers reduce to 17 mod 32. And like I said, I'll let you guys check that. That's just a matter of like multiplying these numbers with themselves and then reducing mod 32. So in the end, let's notice that we have one, two, three, four things that reduce to one mod 32. And we have another one, two, three, four things that reduce to 17 mod 32. So now we can pair those things off and we see that we have four copies of 18 mod 32. So that means we can rewrite this as five times two squared times four times 18, but I'm gonna write that as two squared times two times nine mod 32. So let's color code where this came from. So this five to the six, two squared just comes down. And then adding all of these together, given the fact that 17 plus one is 18, we've got four things, so two squared things, that add up to 18. So there's that 18. 
But now let's notice that we've got two squared, two squared, two to the one. That's most definitely a multiple of two to the five. So that makes all of this congruent to zero mod 32. Okay, so that's good. We've just determined that n is congruent to zero mod 32. And now we'll work mod five to the five instead of two to the five. So after extending our number n in a way that does not change the last five digits, we determined that n was congruent to zero mod two to the five, and thus our number is also congruent to zero mod two to the five. Now we're gonna reduce this thing mod five to the five, and then hopefully kind of smash whatever we get together with this that we already determined to find the last five digits of our number. Okay, so we're gonna use a similar strategy to start, but this one's a little bit more grindy and there's less like nice trick that happens. So we're gonna first start by breaking this into pieces, but instead of being 32 numbers long, it'll be 3,125 numbers long. In other words, five to the five numbers long. So that means we'll have n is congruent to one to the hundred plus two to the hundred ending at three, one, two, five to the hundred. And then we'll have that repetition until we run out of numbers. And that running out of numbers will occur when we hit the number 1 million, which is a multiple of 3125. So the last one will be 1 to the 100 plus, ending at 3125 to the 100. And of course, we're reducing mod 5 to the 5. Okay, nice. Now, all of these end in something that is 0 mod 5 to the 5, but we'll take care of that a bit later. Okay, now we want to look at how many of these there are, and there are exactly 1 million divided by 3125, which is 320. So there are 320 occurrences of this. So that means we can write this as 64 times 5, so I'll write this as 5 times 2 to the 6 times 1 to the 100 plus all the way up to 3, 1, 2, 5 to the 100. And this is all occurring mod 5 to the 5. Okay, nice. Now let's notice that we've got a five factored out of this whole thing. That means that we can look at this stuff in parentheses, mod five to the four, and that's a little bit simpler to reduce and then combine it together with the fact that it's multiplied by five afterwards. But in order to do that cleanly, I'm gonna take this number right here and call it N1, and then we'll reduce N1 mod five to the four, which is 625. But of course we can divide three, one, two, five by six, two, five and get five. So we'll really just get five copies. Okay, so let's write that down. So we have N1 is congruent to one to the hundred plus all the way up to 625 to the hundred plus all the way up to one to the hundred plus six, two, five to the hundred. Like I said, this is reducing mod 625, which is five to the four. And how many of those do we have? Well, we have exactly five of those given that we took this extension here from one to 3,125 and broke it up into chunks that were 625 long. Okay, so that means we can write this as five times one to the hundred plus all the way up to 625 to the hundred. And this is occurring mod 625. Okay, good. Now we're gonna do this step one more time. And after doing it one more time, we'll be able to kind of simplify the whole thing out. So let's take this and call it N2. And then we'll reduce N2 mod, well, you guessed it, 125. So when we reduce N2 mod 125, we get five copies of the sum from one to 125 for the exact same kind of reason that we did right here. So we'll have five and then one to the hundred plus all the way up to 125 to the hundred. And this is all occurring mod 125. 
but now we can reduce the exponents mod phi of 125. So let's recall that phi of 125 is equal to 100. That's because it's five cubed minus five squared. That's that trick for powers of primes evaluated by the Euler totient function. But that means that everything that's not a multiple of five will reduce to one by Euler's theorem over here. And everything that is a multiple of five will clearly reduce to zero because we're raising it to the hundredth power, which is larger than the third power, which is what it would take to reduce mod 125 down to zero. Great, so how many copies of the number one do we get? Well, that's pretty easy to check because it's going to be exactly 100 because we have to count the number of numbers relatively prime or that are not multiples of 5. So we've got 100 things in here that reduce to 1 and everything else reduces to 0. So that means this is congruent to 5 times 100 or 500 mod 125. But 500 is the same thing as 0 mod 125. And now we can like pretty much finish all this off. So N2 is 0 mod 125. That means it's a multiple of 125. But then N1 is 5 times N2. But then N1 is congruent to 5 times N2 mod 625. But that means that N1 is 0 mod 625 because it's 5 times a multiple of 125. So this is 0 mod 625. And then pushing that back up here, we see that N was, will be 5 times N1. But N1 is a multiple of 625, so that means N1 is congruent to 5 times 2 to the 6 times a multiple of 625, but that makes this congruent to 0 mod 5 to the 5. So what do we have? We have our number n from before is congruent to 0 mod 2 to the 5. It's also congruent to 0 mod 5 to the 5, which means it's congruent to 0 mod 10 to the 5. But that gives us an answer here. Our number has five zeros at the end. So those are the last five digits. They're all zero. Now, if you like this problem where we calculated final digits of a problem, well, I've got some other problems where we do that on the channel. You can maybe check the one out that's on the screen right now. And that's a good place to stop. Mm -hmm.